Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool almost pinball repair video for you. We are working on these Williams Pennant Fever arcade games, or I guess they're really arcade games, they're not really pinball machines. We have two of them, a, a pair, a couple. We've been working on these and we've done a few videos on them already, so if you missed the other ones, go back and check them out. They will be down below. Basically, on the first video we checked everything out. On the second video we got this one up and running, but it's limping along, folks. It's limping along. On the next video we got the power supply of this one up and running, but then the board didn't work right because it had a ton of corrosion on it and the sound wasn't working. So on the last video we got the board working and the sound working, but now the displays aren't working. So we're up to fixing the displays. So my hope on these videos um, is that it'll help somebody uh, if they're working on one of these maybe years from now and they're wondering about a certain thing maybe they can come find it on a video like this so we appreciate everybody that's been watching we'll go over again what's going on in the schematics and I'll pull out this board and show it to you this is a rare Williams System 8 this was the only released game that was actually a Williams System 8 um, and we've got two of them and we kind of figured out what they changed from System 8 to System 9, and it has to do with these displays. So we already worked on them a little bit on that one over there, but this one, it's got a bigger issue. So we're going to figure that out. And then also we've got a couple connectors that we need to fix. Um, did I do these? I think I did. I did this cabinet already, but the other cabinet has a couple connectors. And then there's a couple fuses we have to add. we just got all kinds of stuff that we still have to do to these before we can even really play them, test them. Uh, and then we have to rebuild the bat and holy moly there's a lot of work so I'll just tell you up front if you get one of these to get them right I thought just looking at them I thought well it won't be as bad as like a pinball because there's not as much stuff on the play field I was wrong about that holy hell there's stuff everywhere you don't have the flippers to rebuild but you've got this bat to rebuild that's even more complex it's got a lot more stuff going on um, and then you've still got light bulbs that you have to make sure they all work. Um, you still got cleaning and wear, like this one over here has got some wear on the playfield. Right? You've still got a back glass you have to mess with. You've still got displays you have to fix. And here's the kicker, you can't use LEDs in this. Nobody's ever designed an LED board that will work on these. I don't know how many of these they sold, but the displays only work on this, uh, well, the display setup is only used on this one, but the actual display boards themselves are the same as in a lot of the System 9 games. But the problem is that the, uh, the LED replacement displays don't work this, the exact same way. They use a different master display board, and these, uh, these System 8s do not. So somebody would have to design... <sighs> There's a replacement board that will work with System 9, which would probably work... But then you'd have like a space shuttle, uh, but it doesn't have the functionality with the power for the displays coming from uh, the actual CPU board. So you would have to make a separate board that plugs in and sends the power to the ribbon cables somehow. I mean, and it, it's probably not financially uh, uh, sane <laughs> for any company to do that because it would only be useful on this game. And this isn't a super popular game. Um, so we kind of have to fix this board. I probably wouldn't buy a new one anyway because they're four or five hundred dollars. But we kind of have to fix this board to get these displays working. Um, we don't really have an, uh, any kind of alternative. So I'll pull that board out and we'll look at it. And we'll look at on the schematics. Oh, what the display was doing. I've unplugged it, but what it was doing is just one of the displays had one digit lighting up, and a couple of the segments were gone. So. We got issues, people, but we'll look on the uh, schematics and figure out what it must be. Okay, this is the display section. I'm going to edit in real quick a video of what the displays were doing last time, just so you can see what we're starting with. Um, I haven't done anything to the board yet. I took this chip out and socketed, socketed it as well whenever I was doing the corrosion last time. Um, but uh, let's look at that video, and then we'll come back and we'll try to figure it out with the schematics, what must be happening, because the schematics are very detailed. Alright, so I reversed the ribbon cable, and uh, yeah, so the top display is working the same way the bottom one is. 
which means it's the board. Okay, so we got display problems on the board. Okay, so the way this is going down is the power is coming in here and then it's split out to a couple of these chips and then it goes out the the uh, connector on the ribbon cable to player that's probably one and that's two or whatever um, and then these chips are what actually uh, make the uh, displays so what the way it works on a system 9 is the power the high voltage does not come onto the board the the uh, CPU and the PIA and everything create the information that needs to be used for the displays and then that's sent through a ribbon cable that information I think this is the PIA that information is sent through a, a bigger ribbon, a, a different ribbon cable over to a separate board that basically has this on it, on the on an actual board. And then that board has spots for all of the displays to connect to it. And it seems like the reason they did that was to get this power off of the board because both of these boards had power issues where this had actually burnt up and caused all kinds of problems. So uh, go back and look at the older videos if you're interested in all of that. We did it on both of them. <laughs> so here is the section that is the displays. So, and this is for a pennant fever. So we've got, I assume, there's that word again. We well, should be able to figure it out. IJ20 is one of the connectors that we have. And IJ2 is the other. So let's make sure that they're calling that player one and player two. Player one. Uh, damn, it doesn't say. Hmm. You know, I would assume that this is these two are used, but what if this one and this one is used? You know, we'll have to figure out a different way. I don't have a wiring diagram of the whole cabinet for whatever reason. It's not in the schematics. Um, so let's check something else out here. There is another way to tell. Okay. Not only are these connectors not populated, but some of the chips are not populated as well. So we should be able to tell from that what's missing. So U28 and U29 are missing. So whatever those control must not be used. So these top two are missing. So player four must not be used. And player three must not be used. Okay, so that's perfect. So three and four are not used, so they are they are using the connectors for player one and player two. That is not always like that though. Sometimes on a on schematics it'll because what they do is they design this board so that it can do other things too. But it just so happens that this game only uses two displays, and it just so happens that they used the first two displays. Okay, so our problem is we've got the actual number, but it's only on one segment of one of the or one I have to be very careful of what I say here. On one digit uh, of one display. The other display is completely blank, but whenever I swapped the ribbon cables, the digit on the new display started working. And it was only the ones digit, all the way to the right. Okay. So in the schematics, they call it units, actually. I had a customer come in for a second. Okay, so on the display... At one point, we did have all of these segments. These segments are numbered A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so here is the one on the board, and that's how it's made, too. So I don't know the number, the order, but it's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or something like that. Each little, each little line on each thing is a segment. So at one point, we had all of those come up, but then a couple are missing. So there, there might be an issue there. I don't know. But what we're definitely missing is... We only had the units lit up on one display. And I don't really know if it's a player one or player two, but it's just one of them. And if you switch the, the ribbon cables, you got the other one doing the same thing. So all of these other ones are missing. So if we look, player one is controlled by the UDN 6184 at IC31. Otherwise known as the one I haven't put a socket on you. <laughs> so that chip is almost certainly, almost certainly bad. Okay, and it could be something else, but because it could be 
once you go pat back past this it could be the chip that drives it or one of these or something you know or it could be this 74 154 but usually it's these so that one's suspect and then on the player two same thing None of these were working, so these are the digits, these are the segments, and it is IC30, also known as, I do have a socket on that one, yeah baby, looking good. So the question is, do I have another UDN6184, isn't that the one? One of these, I've said in past videos, is expensive to find. I don't know if that's it or not, but uh, I think that's our problem, is those two chips. I believe it's going to be IC30 and IC31. And I think that might get us going. The segments... Uh, hmm. Credit match ball and play display. Hmm. I didn't think about that. What if this is the one? Hmm. Okay, well, what drives this one? No, I just saw that that was in there, What didn't I? Okay. So this chip, IC33, drives the ball and play display and then also player three and also player four. So if it's not there, none of those are being used. So I see 33. Uh, yeah. So it's not there. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're right. Player one and player two. Okay, so I need to see if I've got a UDN 6184 or if that's something I'm going to have to pull off a parts board or order or what the deal is. Um, I don't suppose those are both the same. U32 and U30. No, U32 is a 7180. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at. Um, I'm going to track some of those down. Look what I've been working on. What is that? Some of you know exactly what that is. So that's what I've been working on while we were waiting for parts on this pennant fever. Um, all right, so let me look around and see if I've got any UDN 6184s, uh, and we'll just try the one that's in a socket first to see if that uh, if that gets us fixed up on anything. Okay, so I reviewed the tape, and the one that uh, was at least lighting up one digit was player two, because it was it was plugged in, and I looked on the board, and it was plugged into the one that was connected to IC30. Okay, so IC30 is the one that was socketed. So it said UDN 6184, but some of the ones on the board, it appeared, originally were UDN 6118. U31 is still a 6118. Okay, so I looked around, I didn't have either one, but guess what I found? I found one of the master boards I was talking about. So this is off, I think, a System 11 or maybe System 9. Um, Maybe a PinBot or something like that. Maybe I guess PinBot is System 11. I don't remember what it's off of, <laughs> but it's basically the same thing. So this is what I'm talking about. The power connection is here, right? So this is the one that is on the System 8 board. Pinout's a little different. Um, and then these are the signals that it gets from the CPU that drives the chips and then this is where the displays all plug in so very cool but on system 8 they tried to incorporate it into the actual board and then decided that was a bad idea and moved it all off board so there we go now later on system 11s they would do the same thing with the sound um, the sound amp is right here on system 8 and on system 9 and system 11 and then they did system 11B, I think, and C. 
and uh, they added speech boards that connected with a ribbon cable to the main board and uh, eventually made it where I believe the other board did the amplification instead of this or maybe this only did the amplification or something like that. But as the sound got more complex, they had to move some of that stuff off board too. So I replaced the one chip with a used one off of that master board. And then I ordered some too. So I got new ones coming, but they ain't here yet. And we got to see what happens. So theoretically, if that chip is good that I pulled off the old board, it should make all of our display segments on the player two, which is the second display, should make all of them light up. Um, so we're going to go pop it back in the board in the game and see if we get anything. Okay, we're looking a little better. We got the two left digits back. That bottom display only uses a, a few of the digits but because of the way the artwork is. Uh, but this one on the right is really bright. I think that may have to do with what's going on with the top one. I think the top one that does the digits might be shorted or something and it's kind of interfering with it. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Also, we obviously have segments missing. Um, maybe we should look at that next. Uh, we'll check that out. So, yeah, so uh, we got our digits back, but our segments are screwed up. I wonder if that's the other seg uh, socketed chip, though. That would be great if it was. <laughs> Let's go look at the schematics. Okay, folks, so we are doing player two. These were our uh, digits. We replaced IC30, and it got the digits back, or it seems like it did. But our segments are screwed up, which are controlled by IC32, okay? But player one is the top one, which is completely blank. So what should I replace first on it? I bet you didn't know there was going to be a test, did you? So there's no numbers lighting up, so I, don't, I, should, re I should replace the digits, right? Well, maybe, or maybe there's no segments lighting up. I mean, it could be that the segments are all screwed up. If the, se if the segments are all screwed up, the digits might all be working, but they're not getting any information of what segments to turn on. Or the segments might all be out, and the digits are all working, but they're not getting information on any, you know. So I'll tell you which one I want to replace first. If you look, the segments on player one are connected to the segments on player two which is IC32, which may be that one that's socketed. UDN7180. So I think it's that one that's socketed. If it is, I'll put a... Uh, that's probably why I saw it, all of them for a second. It's probably... It's not making a good contact in the socket or something like that. But I'll see if I've got a new one of those. That'd be cool, but I don't know. I order these things all the time, but I don't ever remember which ones I ordered. So let me look up here on my shelf and see if I've got one. If not, I'll find one. Um, and we'll pop it in there and see if we get... That should fix the segments on Player 2. And then uh, it will tell us if, uh, if that's the problem with Player 1 as well. It, it probably isn't because the same exact signal is going to both. So, you know... Uh, but that's next. So let me see if I can find a UDN7180. We're getting better. We're getting different numbers back every time I add something in. And so we got our bottom two little segments back, too. Um, and it's still getting there. So I think what I'll do now is uh, we're going to replace the uh, digit chip for the top. I think I really think this being twice as bright as the other ones. I hope it doesn't screw anything up. I'm trying not to leave it on too long. But I really think that that has something to do with the top one being screwed up and there being some kind of talk back or something. Or that's the theory I'm operating on, so we'll see. Back to the schematics. So folks, a lot of time has passed since the last little segment of this video. And uh, the problem that I ran into was these, in the, in the schematics it says 6184, but they're 6118s like actually installed on the board. I was trying to put used ones in, and I didn't have any that worked right, so I had to order some. So I got some in, and had swapped both of them back out, and uh, then, <laughs> that didn't fix anything. So after doing that, all of the strobes go through these 4069 chips here, and apparently those are very easy to damage because they were all damaged. So I ended up... I know it's dark. I ended up putting new ones in. 
New 6118s. And we finally have our displays. Finally. So we've got our displays fixed on both, which means that the, the boards are almost done. There's a one little other thing that I have to do to them, but pretty much got the boards working up and doing their thing. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is we're, we've got to knock out some little uh, some wiring issues. So I don't think I have my flashlight. So the first thing I'm going to do is all of these are insulation displacement connectors. I'll show you what that is here in a minute. It's They, they suck. But that one, the wire had popped out uh, that ran the sound section. So we've got to definitely replace that connector. Um, a lot of people say, oh, replace all the insulation displacement connectors. Well, there's like 20 of them in each machine, so I'm not going to replace all of the insulation displacement connectors. If we have issues, though, I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to do the one that's the power connection, which isn't a bad idea to replace anyways, just to make sure that it's making good contact. So I'll pop that out, and I'll show you... Uh, I'll show you uh, how it looks after we replace it and what the old one looks like. Okay, folks, so this is the connector that we've replaced. That's the power connector that basically the power supply sends all of its voltages. Or There's some other ones too, but most of its voltages over to run the, the MPU off of. So originally that is an insulation displacement connector uh, like these other ones. So like that one is and that one is. So notice how on this one there are wires going in both sides. That's just the, that was a cheap way of making connectors that they did in factories. This is the one that I cut off. So they call it insulation displacement connectors because in the factory, the way that you would uh, wire up the harness, instead of having to crimp connections on the end of the wire, you could just pull the wire through the top of, of the connector there. And then you had a little thing that pushed the wire down. And when it pushed it down into those blades, so see those blades right there? When you push the wire down into that, the insulation is cut by the little metal pins in there, which makes it, which exposes the bare wire inside, which connects it to that pin, which you know connects it. So they call it insulation displacement because those little metal things push the insulation apart so that the wire is connected to the the metal. Um, I, IDC connectors. These things they mess up a lot because if the if the wire get they're they're fine until the wire gets loose. So if the wire gets loose it's no longer making good connection and then people will push it back down in there. But if you don't push it all the way down through that little slit there, it doesn't make good connection to the actual metal inside the wire. So it's hard to even tell if it's if it's making good connection um, by looking at it. But uh, the, we had to replace this one because this second pin here, so the one, two, the second one, the wire had pulled out. And look at the little slit. See how it's all been out of shape now? The one on the left is fine. The third one is fine, but that middle one's all screwed up. So once it does that, it no longer will grab the wire right, and it's all screwed up. So people have made the suggestion, you know, we do all of our repair info we've gotten from pinrepair.com, Clay's website. I don't know him, but uh, he he, uh, he knew, he, he had a great site up for a long time about how to fix all of these. That's where we learned all of our stuff. And so a lot of people, including Clay, would say that you have to replace this connector on the power supply um, just to make sure that you have a good power connection and that will keep the board from resetting and doing all kinds of the uh, creepy things that the boards do whenever they have trouble. Um, and also you can get a voltage drop there if that's not making good con contact, uh, contact. So we replaced that one, got it all good. The one over there, to me, still looks good and is working good, so I'm not going to worry about it on that machine. Um, we had the issue on the other one where that wire there had been replaced with the wrong connector because they put a different power supply in it and they've got it wired up kind of weird so we're going to have to fix that but the next thing that we need to do is on the back box on a, anything from like a system I think it's from system 7 up this is a system 9 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 all of that it may go even uh, before that 
they had this situation where they had two bridge rectifiers in the back box and the problem is those are not fused so they connect back to the transformer through here transformers actually right here on these machines but they connect to the transformer but there's no fuse in line so since there's no fuse in line uh, if there's a problem where the bridge blows it melts the wires back to the transformer causes all kinds of issues so you kind of need to put a, a fuse in place on both of those bridge rectifiers and it, yeah you want to put an 8 amp fuse on both of them so I'm gonna figure out where is the best place to put that uh, and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can rig it up. They've got fuses over here for the general illumination already And then the main fuse is right there on the bottom of the box. So I mean you could just put them right here um, Which I may actually do because You know if I put them there you'd say oh, I don't do that they'll be in the way well that one's in the way, you know So there's not really a bunch of room right here to put it so maybe we, uh, boy, they'd be sexy if I could get them right back there on the wall beside it. Maybe I'll try that. Hmm. So the wiring to both of them comes up through here. Hmm. I think we're going to do that. I'm going to try to put them on the wall over there. Let's see what I can make happen. So I don't have the full schematics of this pennant fever, of course, so the cabinet wiring isn't listed in this little uh, schematic thing that I've got. Uh, but the very next game that Williams made that was like at least mass produced was a Space Shuttle, six or seven months later. And it was also the first System 9 game. So they abandoned this System 8 system and went on to System 9. Well, there were other System 9 games, but they, were, they weren't really released widely. There were prototypes and stuff. Uh, so the, the first big one, though, was Space Shuttle. And so um, I'm looking at the schematics of a Space Shuttle, which are more detailed. It is a System 9, so it's a little bit different, but the power supply section and everything kind of works the same. So the, situ the situation that you have is this is the transformer that's in the back box of the Pennant Fever. And if you look at how they designed this, I am obviously not an electrical engineer, but if you look, the transformer itself right, is fused. Uh, if I can find where. Hmm. Where are our fuses? Here we go. So there is a line fuse right as the power comes in. So the power comes in, there's a line fuse, there's a, a varistor, varistor. Uh, there is a line filter, right? There's an on-off switch. And then all of your power comes in. Let's see if these go down to like any AC stuff. Uh, yeah, so on, on um, Space Shuttle it has this other transformer and for the flipper power spot, but we don't have that on, on ours. So on ours, it's more like just this. So here is the transformer. So the power goes right into the transformer. So if there is some kind of short, like say the transformer shorts out, it will blow that line fuse. And so that this is protected by that. But the problem comes whenever something shorts on the secondary side. So the way they the way they uh, designed it is this is a 90 volt winding, right? That the high voltage uses for the display is what we've been messing with, and it goes over onto the power supply. Well, when it gets to the power supply, it's fused. So if there's any kind of short on anything, it blows that fuse. Okay, and then there is the 9.3 volt AC winding and when it gets to the power supply each side because it's center tapped has a um, fuse on it and that's what runs the 5 volt 12 volt negative 12 volt power supplies okay and then if you skip these for a second and go way down here 
There is a 6.3 volt AC winding. That's for the general illumination. And when it gets on the power supply, it's fused. So they've fused all this stuff before it gets to any of its magic, any of its you know, stuff that has the ability to cause problems. So my whole point is, from the transformer to the power supply, there's just wires, but then once you get on the, on the power supply, there are fuses. Well, they did these two bridge rectifiers here, where they run the, the, the transformer wires right into the bridge rectifier, and then it heads out and it's fused, right? But this is upstream of the bridge. So over here you got the same thing. The, the secondary goes out to the bridge and then the bridge when it gets on the power supply it's fused. But the problem is, so if something up here screws up, it'll blow that fuse. If something up here screws up, it'll blow that fuse. But the problem is, if this screws up, there's no fuse to blow. So it just starts, it, sh it shorts the two AC lines together and starts cooking them. So these these wires will literally catch on fire. I don't mean we'll get really hot. I don't mean <laughs> we'll we'll um, we'll cause problems. No, no. I mean they will catch on fire. There will be flames. Your house might burn down. It's that bad, right? Because it's not strong enough or I don't even know if it's possible. It's not strong enough to blow the fuse way back here on the other side of the transformer. Because it has to go through the the, the secondary, back through the primary, and then over there to blow the fuse. It's not going to do that. It'll just sit there and cook. So I actually was filming a video uh, a couple years ago, and it did it while I was working on the damn thing. Right, right in front of me. I saw it do it. Um, so if you look around on our channel here, there's a video where we talk about that. But this is System 8. It's got the same exact problem, so we're going to go ahead and fix it. And I'll show you uh, the, quick, the quick way to fix it. So how they did it on this particular one was there was a, you saw the two bridge rectifiers, there was a plate mounted there, and there it looks like they've actually routed these ground wires so that the plate is grounded. Right, the plate, you can see where it went. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the plate over a little bit just so i got just a little bit more room. And I'm using these breakaway fuse holders that are insulated. You see how there's no metal that can touch anything, so that nothing is going to touch the ground wire that's there or anything. I could literally screw this right into the ground wire and it wouldn't be a problem, but I'm not going to do that. Um, these are really cool. If you need these, I'll try to put the link below on, um, on Amazon or something, but these are made by Bus, and the part number is S8000. These are really useful. We buy them in like big old strips of 10 or 12 or something. These are really useful because you can literally just break them in half so that they're singles or doubles or triples or whatever you want. You can see the one from the factory here on the side is a 4 for the general illumination. It's the same basic thing. Uh, so these work great for this. And they're good to have in. Use anytime you need a fuse holder, that's what you need some of those. So I've taken the, the two bridges off the back. This is him there, this is them there. And the AC lines are marked on the schematics, but also on the game. I mean on the on the bridge. So you can see that originally they soldered the lugs to the connectors. That's factory. Which means these are the original bridges too, you know, so. Hmm. Are they a part though that wears? I don't know if they get worse or if they just poop the bed all of a sudden. <laughs> is this one is this one 50% of a brand new one? I don't know that that's true. Okay, so what so what you want to do is this whole thing will unplug and you can take it and put it on a bench or something too if you want. I don't know if these will. I guess these will. Yeah. This whole thing will unplug. So you can go do it on a workbench. I didn't, but so what I've done is I've cut the wires the eight, one of the AC wires going to each bridge rectifier. So on the on this one, the red wires are the AC. So just one of them, and it doesn't matter which one. You want to cut one of those wires and put a fuse in because that's what's feeding the bridge. So the transformer, and then the bridge. One of the wires feeding to the to the uh, bridge. You want to cut. So we cut it, soldered it to a fuse holder, and then soldered the other end of the exact same wire to there. So now we have just made where a fuse goes in the middle. And we did the same thing with the other one, 
the AC wires on it are blue. Uh, and uh, once you do that, if you do it just right, it'll mount back in whatever you're working on. And not just this game, but other ones too. Um, I'm going to mount it like that. And be able to mount these on the wall. They're right beside it. You got to be careful. You don't want to make it where it'll hit anything or it'll, it can spin around. But you have these screws here that you can put in place to mount it on the wall. And uh, I'll show you how it ends up. But uh, the the fuse rating that you want to use, according to PinRepair.com, Clay is an eight amp slow blow. So we're going to put eight amp slow blows in both of them because you're not really fusing the solenoid voltage and the lamp voltage. You're fusing in case these bridges blow up. So eight amps seems to be a good uh, a good voltage. So uh, I'll screw them back in there and I'll show you how it looks when it's all nice and tidy. The lines were perfectly long enough, so I moved the two bridges slightly to the left. And then I put my two fuses in there, made sure that they're uh, not touching anything or nowhere near anything where they can short out or anything like that. You got my two 8 amp fuses in there. Looking pretty good. So the power supply is done. We replaced the connectors down there. That's done. We put the two fuses on the uh, two bridge rectifiers. That's done. The board uh, is pretty much done. I'll show you something about that here in a later video whenever we uh, finish up the other one. I've got to put the screws back in, all of that. Um, we've got our displays working. And the game is up and running. So we are at a good stopping point so I'm gonna do the same uh, mod to the bridge rectifier on this one and there were there was a little wiring harness that somebody added if you didn't see the earlier videos this is a newer version of the power supply so it, the, the uh, general illumination hooks up a little differently over there so what they did was they took and instead of soldering this to the transformer they soldered it to these two, to like a lamp cord, and then soldered the lamp cord to the <laughs> transformer, but uh, I don't really like that. And then the connector there needs replaced because the, the general illumination connector always burns up. But instead of replacing it, they <laughs> taped a lamp cord to the wires and then taped the other end of the lamp cord to some other wires and used another insulation displacement connector. We were getting rid of all that crap. I'm going to put a nice little tasty little connector on there um, and then uh, put those other two fuses on the bridge rectifier. So. You know, I was going to end the video, but let me do that real quick just so you can see how that ends up. It's just going to take me probably an hour and a half, but I'll, I'll come back and show you the very end of it for the end of the video just so you, you see what I'm talking about. All right, folks, we got that all back how it goes. Put a new connector for the general illumination. I put them in the order that they are in over here, but it doesn't really matter. The four come from the same source, and then the four grounds come from the same source. Uh, I soldered the, the pigtail onto the transformer. That was not easy. <laughs> so the way I did that was I took the speaker panel off, and then I took this cover off, and then I took the transformer off and laid it down flat to where I could get to it well with the soldering iron and soldered the wires on it. But now they're uh, now it's nice and safe. I, I don't like whenever they've on power stuff. I don't like whenever there's electrical tape taping stuff together. It just you can do it that way. I mean, it's called electrical tape for a reason, but you got to be real careful about that stuff. So, uh, and then we got our, I moved, I did the same thing I did on the other one. I moved the plate over to the left a little bit, just to give me a little bit more room and, uh, added the fuses in. You can see that the fuse is kind of close to the transformer, but it's not touching it or close to touching it. Um, put eight amp fuses in there. Same as the other. And uh, that's that. Yeah, so we are still up and running on this one as well. 
Okay, folks, so that's it for now. We have uh, done a lot of the back box work. There's not too much more electrical stuff to do. On the next video, we will start working on the play fields. So I hope you're enjoying it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links to buy their Amazon stuff. We appreciate that. If you're going to buy something on Amazon, if you click, click our link down below, it takes you there and it gives us a royalty because we sent you there. So thank you for everybody that's been doing that. Uh, I don't think that works in the app we're finding out, though. I think it only works on, like, a browser. So, um, But, you know, we don't... We don't want people to go to too many, too much trouble for it, so <laughs> just do the best you can. We appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And uh, make sure you check out our other channel. We have a brother channel, My Brother Donnie. Go check that out. He's literally my brother Donnie. I'm over there with him a lot, uh, working on stuff. Uh, we've uh, been working on a building that we bought, uh, doing some roof repair and all kinds of cool stuff like that. It has nothing to do with arcade games, but go check it out. He is a hoot. You will enjoy him. He's entertaining. Um, but we'll see you on the next video. Leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up. And subscribe to us if you haven't already. And it'll tell you when we put up a new video. But on this one, we'll have a new video up tomorrow. So see you then.